Hey everybody, if you aren't that sure about how UVs work and UV layout and how do textures actually get applied to models, then you are watching the correct class. This is over an hour long and it's a hands-on tutorial where we're gonna walk through simple textures being applied to a Coke can and we're gonna move on from that onto this old man in his sweater and then we're gonna push that from Maya over to Unreal Engine to see what it looks like and how it gets into there. And though we're using Maya for this, you can do and follow along the exact same process using Blender. It's just a slight terminology difference. All the concepts are the same. If you get to the end of this and you really want me to do a Blender version, let me know. But let's learn everything about the UV process. We're going to start off with a pretty simple case just so that you can understand how UVs work. So I'm going to start with creating a cylinder here in Maya. And if we take a look at this cylinder, it's just a simple default cylinder, we're going to apply a material because your textures and UVs all have to do with materials. So let's go ahead and assign a Lambert. And if we look at the Lambert here, we're going to go ahead and do the, go to the color and just give it a red color. So here's, if we're making a Coke can, we might say, sure, this is a Coke can from a very, very far distance. You might believe this is a Coke can, right? If you put it far, far away. But Eventually, we're going to want some sort of label to make this look like an actual Coke can, even if it is very simplified. So if you don't want to flood fill your object with a color through a material, you would plug in a texture or an image of some sort. So again, let's just start with the basics before we get to a real image. We're going to go to this icon here, this little uh, checkerboard. That icon just means plug something in. And we'll see there is actually a checkerboard input, which acts as a file, but it's it's a built-in procedural image versus this one here that says file. That's where if you have a JPEG you want to use, which we will get to, you would put it in here. But we want to plug in instead a checkerboard just to start testing some things. So we're going to choose checker. And what that does is now that plugs a checkerboard in for your material. To jump back to the material level, just click this icon here. And then you'll see we're back at Lambert 2. Here's our color, it's grayed out here because this button now points to our checkerboard texture, which we can see the details of here on this tab. But anyway, don't get too caught up. Go ahead and follow along, but don't get too caught up on those particulars. We gotta really just understand what are UVs in the first place. That's our goal here at the moment. So to see the texture, hit the six key and so that you can see the texture. So here is the checkerboard applied to the can. Now, why is the checkerboard applied in this particular pattern? That's where UVs come in. So let's go to panels and go to save layouts and choose perspective UV layout. If you're using Blender, uh, the same concept applies. So it's nothing specific to Maya, but I just have Maya handy to show you this. So here we have this grid on the right side, and this is your UV editor. And what you do here is we're going to just focus on the simple concept of this little area here from zero to one and zero to one. Now when you hear UV, what that means is this is your U axis and this is the V axis. When you're in school as a young kid, you might have learned that they always call this the X axis and this the Y axis for your algebra. But X, Y, and Z are already taken over here in the 3D world. So the letters that are left, well there's I guess technically 23 letters left you could choose from. Somebody somewhere chose, well, let's just call this U then and we'll call this V because X and Y are already taken. So this represents a 2D space of U and V. And if you select your can, you will see your image. This is your texture image, this checkerboard that Maya is kind of automatically making this checkerboard for you. But again, we'll plug in a real image of a Coke can um, soon. But what is going on here? So this cylinder comes with a default, what's called UV layout. And to hide the checkerboard for a minute, you can click on this little button up here. This here is technically your UVs. When you hear UV layout, this is your UV layout. Now again, what does that mean? What it means is you have a 2D image from this zero to one and zero to one space that I turned off, right? So there's the image, I turned it off for a second, just for visibility. You see it's still working over here. What the purpose of this UV layout is, is how to transfer. So here's the core of how this all works. How do you transfer this image onto your geometry? And that is from this UV map. How, how are you mapping? How are you translating your 2D image onto your 3D shape? Now a cylinder comes with, you, you kind of have a default starting point. If I right click and choose face, just to show you something here, and I select 
face here. Technically, I could select face here or here because these represent the same thing. Let's let's zoom in and take a look at this face here. So this little triangle here, this is the geometry. And this over here, this triangle isn't technically the geometry. This represents, if I turn the image back on, what part of the image that's aligned under this face gets put onto the actual geometry. You have control over where all these different parts of the UV map go on this whole image and that's how you control what part of it gets transferred onto your 3D shape. Let's step out a little bit here. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna choose UV shell. You'll work with this quite a bit. And a UV shell is just kind of a bunch of faces that are stuck together is a way to think of it. So if I go into the move tool here and I move this shell around, notice it doesn't affect the geometry at all. The geometry keeps its shape. So what you're not affecting at all is the geometry. What you're affecting is when you have an image, here's our image again, when you have an image and you're changing where this shell lands on the image, it's kind of what's getting cut out of the image and applied onto the surface. And it's technically, if you break it way down, it's based on the individual UV points, which each UV point corresponds to a vertex. So it's, it's UV point to vertex and then you put all those together and you get faces and when you put a bunch of faces and combine them together in a common shell that's just the term Maya uses in Blender it's an island but when you make a shell of all these faces stick together they all move together hopefully now this is making sense watch if I put the middle of this little wheel or this this shell in that checkerboard you see the center of the 3d shape has that in the center not only is the position important, also your rotation of this shell. So let me hit E and rotate. Notice how as I rotate the shell, it's picking up different parts of the image and transferring it over to the shape. And also scale, scale is important. As I increase the scale on this shell, notice how it looks like the image over here is shrinking. But what's really happening is I'm capturing more of this 2D image and that's transferring its information onto the top of the cylinder, right? So you can get an idea of, of how that's working. As this gets bigger, it's grabbing more and more space. Now you may wonder, how come you're going out here into nowhere land and it's gray, but you're still seeing image? This zero to one space is being repeated in uh, multiple directions. That's why we see the image repeating on the surface there. But generally you wanna keep these within the zero to one boundary. So that is this shell. This shell down here represents the underside of the can. And again, these are just default uh, layouts that you get with a generic cylinder. It'll get a little more complex in a little bit when we have our character. But now you'll see move that around and you're getting the different parts of the image transferred over here. And if I grab this piece and move it around, now notice here we have like a long strip of black. It doesn't look like a checkerboard. It looks like long stripes. And the reason for that is what we're looking at is all of these, remember these represent faces. So if I select all these different faces over here, that's all these faces of the cylinder here. And notice the image underneath, all this right here, it's just one black checker from the checkerboard. So all of these faces are gonna have the same image stretched across them. So what that means is this shell here is the entire can from one side to the other. So if I want the checkerboard to span across the can, I just need to scale the UV map to cover more of the image. Use the move, move it back here a little bit. And now you can see, if I go into object mode, you can see the checkerboard seems a little more compressed on the cylinder now. And that's because I, I changed the scale. Now technically this is kind of a foul. You're not supposed to have overlapping UVs, uh, but again, this is just for demonstration purposes of how they work. So yeah, technically you'd want to take this and scale it down a little bit or rearrange your different uh, scales and positions of these shells so that you don't have any overlap. So that is what we would want to think about when we consider what's going on. So this hopefully at this point, ask yourself, does this make sense? And hopefully the answer is yes. If not, watch this part again and make sure this makes sense before you move on to the next part, which is where we use an actual image. So let's do that next. Going to go back to my material and I'm going to break the connection of this checkerboard being applied to the cylinder. So to do that, you just right click on color and choose break connection. So now we have no 
image anymore assigned to our cylinder. And notice that the UVs are the same. So the UV, this information, you can think of it as living with the shape. So it really has nothing to do with the image that you're using. It'll match the image, hopefully, but it, it is an attribute that belongs to the 3D shape. So let's go over here now, and we're going to plug in a file that I have already, just something I found online of a Coke can. If you just go to Google and find Coke can texture, you'll find a similar image that you can use. But I'm going to this time plug in a file instead of a built-in checkerboard. So you'll do a file, and it's going to ask you what is the name of the file that you want to use. So you just need to browse to your file that you're using. And this is really more of a Maya-specific topic but what you want to do is when you download that file is put it in your projects source images folder so i'm just using the default project at the moment i haven't even saved my file here um, but use the default project or whatever your project structure is that you have set up put the file in your source images folder of that project because that's where maya is going to think it should be and when you migrate projects around it's just good organization to keep your to keep your textures here in the source images folder that you're using on your object. So here is my Coke can texture and I'm going to open and you'll notice if I look at my, my can here, it's not looking very Coke can like, right? It's kind of let's show you without the grid line. So it's, you get the essence kind of of a Coke can, but it's not looking very Coke can like also I'm going to pull it up here on the grid. All right, so that's not quite looking right. So let's figure out why. And through that process, it'll help us understand what's going on with the entire UV system. So I'm going to select this, bring this over here, make it small. And then I do want to see it a little bit. And let's turn our image back on. So remember what we looked at with the checkerboard. This is your image from 0 to 1 and 0 to 1. And again, if I hide the image, Here's the top of my cylinder, here's the bottom of my cylinder, and this is the sides of my cylinder, flattened and laid out. And this here, again, determines, wherever this is on the image, that determines how that image gets copied onto the 3D shape. So let's turn our image back on. It's a little bright of an image, so there's another tool you can do to kind of dim it down. So if you turn on this button over here, similar icon, but what it's for over here is adjusting the brightness of your, your image. So I'm gonna darken it down just a little bit so I can see my UV shell a little bit better. So let's start with this shell. I'm going to right click, go to UV shell, and I'm going to move that around. I'm going to say, see how this is moving around? That's the top of my cylinder, right? You can see that floating around over here as the top. And right now you'll notice I'm hovered over the tab. And so I have a giant tab here on all of these faces because that's what this does. Wherever these faces of the UV shell land, that image underneath, which is that, gets copied over to here. Now that's too, this UV shell is too small. It's not capturing enough of the image that I need. So I'm gonna use the scale tool, hit R and scale that up and hit W and align that a little bit better with the top of the can. All right, so now if I look over here, the top of my can is looking a little bit better than it was at the beginning. And let's do the same for the bottom. I'm gonna spin around underneath. Right now on the bottom, you see a Coca-Cola, well, you see Coca, and that's because look where the shell is. This shell down here is over the image where it says Coca. And just to talk about it a little bit more, I'm gonna pick the shell. Notice again, as I move this, say I move it over to the scanning code there, you see the scanning code here. If I move it over to Again, to coca, and then notice the orientation of the coca word there. If I rotate the shell, it rotates how it's applied onto the can. So again, I'm, I'm kind of repeating myself, but hopefully so that you really understand what's going on. All right, but I need to move this. So I'm gonna move the shell with W over to the bottom part of the image here. And, you know, you almost wouldn't notice you know, the difference here, but um, if you do need the whole part of the shell, then technically you could zoom this up to capture the whole part of the bottom of the can there. Okay, there's the bottom. It's not perfectly centered, but whatever, it's fine. And then now we got to deal with the side of the can. Let's take a look at this 
represents the entire side of the can unrolled like it, as if you cut it out with scissors and rolled it out flat. Let's move this shell down to the label a little bit better and then we can use the scale tool to resize it. You can either do it one at a time or both together from the center. Now I'm, I'm leaving a little bit on the edge here and that's for what I'm doing at the moment. I'm going to say that's fine. And then now if I go to object mode and tap the space bar so I can see it in its single view here. This shape is just a simple cylinder. We don't have any ridge across the top here. We don't have the bottom indented or anything. So, you know, this this is a really simple cylinder with a simple image. But if this was on a, you know, if this was on a shelf, you would think, yep, that's a that's a can of Coke. And let's go back to the let's go back to the UV layout for a second. Um, if you really need the edges to be right up next to that, so you would just go ahead and use the scale tool again on this shell. and adjust that to be right up to the edge on both sides. Now, if you go too far, right? So here I went a little too far. I went into the gray. That means on your can is you can see here that the image has gone off the label. You can actually even see a little bit of the, the top part of the image because we're, we're biting into the image that represents the top of the can here. So that is actually a little bit too far. So you, you need to kind of watch your edges there in a case like this. Now, this isn't the only way you would work. You also have the idea of painting your can or in Photoshop using the UVs to do something specific. And all, all that is doable and there's more advanced ways to do this. But what I really want you to focus on at the moment is understanding how this UV layout, meaning these shells, where these shells are, how they're responsible for transferring the image data from whatever's within this patch here, transferring that data onto the can, the image data onto the can. And just one more time, you probably get tired of this part, but see how the orientation of the tab is, the hole here. If, if you think that looks weird, maybe you think that the hole should be over uh, the back label here instead. That just means you need to rotate your shell so it moves where each face gets transferred over there. So let's do that. I'm gonna rotate and move it so that the tab now so here's the tab opening and now it's over the label here rather than before it was over here all right so that's the case of using uvs and talking about uv layout for a simple cylinder if all of this makes sense let's move on to the next thing we're going to talk about and that is what if you need to add your own UVs in this case the can already had its UVs what if you need to do your own UV layout and that's where the power comes of knowing how to do this so we're going to do that next with a character so I'm going to hide our can for now I'm just going to hit H and hide the can we don't really need it for the next step we're going to bring in a character that I found on turbo squid I'll put a link in the description so that you can grab the exact same character which I highly recommend you do so once you download and extract that character, it's a RAR file, so you have to use a 7-zip or something to unzip it when you follow the link. Um, let me just show you which character it is. It is this character here. So we're going to download this character. So go to Turbo Squid, download this character. Thank you, Zar Kadikov, for this character. This is old. This is like from 2012 or 2010 or something like that. But totally works fine for what we need to do and we're going to be doing the uv layout on this sweater so let's uh, go ahead and download this and again it's going to be a dot rar file and if you don't have any tools for unzipping you go to 7-zip here uh, it's just a free tool that you can use to unzip files which you're going to need to do for your old man here and he's going to be an obj file so for an obj file what you need to do for obj is you're going to go to file import and you're going to browse to the path of where you put your obj file and go ahead and import and he's much bigger than the can so look at this fella he's he's a big fella and scale wise we, it's we don't really care about that stuff right now all right so go ahead and grab this guy and we're actually just gonna do all our exercises today with the sweater in particular so we can go ahead and hide the rest of him so that we can just focus on the sweater. So you can just go up to display, 
hide and then hide unselected objects so that we only see the sweater floating in space and then you can frame on that. All right, so this is the object that we're gonna use to get a much better understanding on how UVs work and also how you customize your own UV layout and make adjustments so that once you have this knowledge, you can model in UV and texture anything. So step one, just like the can, let's go ahead and assign a material. So I'm gonna assign, I'll just assign a Lambert. And over here for a color, let's just start by giving it a default color. So we have a, this way we know the material's working. So we have a sweater that is blue. Let's go ahead and start off with just assigning a simple checkerboard so that we can test and see how our UVs are lining up and stretching and anything of that sort. So go to your Lambert, same thing. You're gonna click on the uh, input here and grab a checker input. Now this time, if you hit six to show the texture, hmm, nothing's happening. And if you select your sweater, it shows that there's an image here, but we don't see any of the UV layout yet. So if I hide the checkerboard there, you'll see where, where's those little patches. When we had the cylinder, the cylinder, had, just Maya had already torn apart, if you want to think of it, uh, the can for us and laid out the top, the bottom, and then the, the label here, or the, the sides of the can, which we aligned with the label. But the sweater here has nothing at all uh, to start with. So Another thing I want to do before we get a little bit farther here is you'll see that there is a checkerboard image here. Now this is getting a little on the advanced side, but nothing too crazy. Um, I want these to be smaller. I want this to be a much finer checkerboard. So you can adjust that because this is a procedural image. It's not a real image. It's not like a JPEG. Maya is making this checkerboard for you. So I'm going to go into the checkerboard by clicking on the input here. And when you get to here, you can jump over to this tab that says place 2D, what's it say? Place 2D texture three. And you'll see there is a repeat UVs. So it's set to four by four. So like this is one unit and it's being repeated four times in each direction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and I'm just gonna make it 20 by 20. Just to really densify that uh, checkerboard because that'll help us see some things when we apply it here a little bit better. But back to the idea of, let's go back here. Let's go back here. So here's our material. It's technically being applied to our sweater, but we don't see any of the checkerboard on our sweater. Why not? Because I know I'm in texture mode. I hit the six key. The sweater has not had any UV layout done at all yet. Whereas the can had a default, this has nothing. So you do have tools to do some default layout. So let's go and just test the uh, first highly likely to fail option, but just so you can see that it's here. Sometimes it works if you have like just a cube, but this is not a cube. Go to UV and go to automatic. That sounds great, right? So hit automatic and you'll see it laid out. Move this over a little bit. It laid out the cloth. It tore apart the sweater. What it does is kind of like a 3D scan of it to analyze it and figure out where to put the islands together. Let me hide the texture for a second. So this is how Maya decided the sweater should be torn apart and laid out flat to get the best image placement. Now, if you look at the sweater though, that's not the best representation of the 3D grid on the surface. You have some huge stretches here and weird little patches and weird little cuts. You have a cut and seam all over, like there's a tiny little, tiny little checkerboard there, but then a giant one here. So Think of the idea, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to, our end goal is, all right, let's talk about the end goal. What's the end goal? The end goal is to lay out this sweater on UV space to do a UV layout so that if this patch here was fabric, then you would cut out pieces of the fabric and put them together in a way that makes sense when you put it on the 3D model. So we have a little bit of work to do because this did not work, not not very well. So let's let's look at the other options we have. So if we look at what the automatic mapping did, you know, you see something like this and you think maybe that looks okay, but it's actually not that okay because we had some seams showing up here, showing up here in the middle of your shirt. If you have a shirt, you don't want a bunch of patches and seams all over the place. And look over here, one little face is all by itself. So let's let's see if we can find where that face is. So that face there is where it's 
where did it go? Oh, that face here is inside the cuff turned back up of the sleeve. So again, this is, think of how would you manufacture, think of it from a different angle. How would you manufacture this sweater based on cutting out pieces from a piece of fabric? Let's actually take a second and learn from the sewing industry. This is what you would do. In this case, this says it's for a t-shirt, long sleeve, something, something. When you have a pattern for a shirt, and again, this is we're talking about a shirt, a sweater, but this applies to everything to do with UVs. Again, if you understand this for the simple sweater example, it applies to everything for the UV case. But this is the idea of you're laying out something flat and cutting it out of a pattern, and then you're reassembling it back to make a 3D shape. Again, let's find another case. So here's an image here. Sorry, it's probably going to be kind of small, but you can just search yourself sewing pattern, long sleeve shirt or something, and you'll get some images that show the idea of if you have a piece of fabric, you cut them out, cut out the pieces in a certain way, then you sew them together, and then you'll end up with your final shape in quote 3D space. So we need to do the reverse. We need to look at the 3D shape, kind of tear it apart, to lay it out here in this zero to one space, this UV space, so that it makes sense when it gets rebuilt back together. Think of a bearskin rug, right? If you have a bearskin rug, you don't just lay a bear flat on the ground. You actually have to skin it and find just the right points where you make cuts in the bear to be able to lay it out flat. I know it's kind of a gory example, but that is kind of the same idea here. We need to find where, where do we take apart this 3D sweater. Now you're not messing with the shape, you're just dealing with the transfer of the 2D UV space. All right, I'm gonna stop talking. We're gonna keep going because hopefully it'll make more sense as we move along. So let's look at another way to do UVs. So if you go up to UV this time, let's look at the idea of camera based. So I'm gonna aim my camera at my sweater pretty straight and I'm gonna go to UV camera based and it does another layout for you. Now you might think, oh, perfect. That looks amazing, right? If I go to Get rid of that. Looking at this head on, it it looks better for sure than it did before. But what's kind of weird is it looks like a projection, like the sweater is against the wall and you're shining a projector at it because from this point of view, it's taking the image and shooting it directly at the sweater. That's what we saw when we looked at the that there, right? So here's the image underneath and it's taking that image underneath and looks like it's projecting it on the sweater. But the problem is, if we start turning the sweater, you'll see you got some weird stretching going on there, across the back, across the arm. There's some weird stuff going on that does not look like a checkerboard. So what's, the, what's going on here, and the reason it doesn't, doesn't work, is, again, remember what's happening. Face by face is being analyzed. Actually, vertex by vertex, but we'll call it face by face is being analyzed and whatever image is underneath it is getting transferred to the 3D shape. So if we come over here, for example, let's select this face. All right, so I pick that random face there. On the 2D map, that is this face here. So this face here is picking up a little bit of white and a little bit of black and copying that data over to that face there. And you know, that looks fine. That it's fine because it's it's flat to it but let's look at this face for example over here this face here it's if i look at it you know it it is kind of square shape the face itself right but if we look at the matching if we select it and then find it over here on the uv map actually that one's not horrible let me find a more horrible one this one here this face here on the geometry is again kind of proportional it's you, you would call that a square but over here it's just a really thin sliver and using this particular image it's kind of hard to tell why this is a problem but we're only getting a tiny sliver of information off of this little face on the uv side that it's getting transferred over here and that's why this set of faces from you know from here to here all of these faces collectively they're only covering one white square, which is why you have this white stretch going all the way across there because these four faces are represented here on 
the UV layout as these four faces. And, and again, it's being constrained mostly to one little square. Whereas over here, you have one, two, three, four faces, and it's covering at least three grids. So again, back to the idea of shirt manufacturing. This, if you had a checkerboard piece of fabric, this is not, this is not looking like it's working. So that's the, the main point is <laughs> that doesn't work either. So you can't just do a camera projection in this situation. There are times when you can, if you're doing little pieces and you know that's going to work, you could do it. But for what we're doing right now, this is not working either. However, it does give us kind of a starting point of, you know, visually this looks better than what it did before. So now comes the real work of the layout. So I'm going to get rid of that. So we got to strategize here. If we had this shirt, maybe you're wearing a shirt. Well, hopefully you're wearing a shirt now. If you're wearing a shirt and you look at your sleeves, you'll notice that there is a seam in the fabric, right? Because that's how you put a, a sleeve together is you got to sew the sleeve on. So let's, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit five to get rid of the image off of this sweater for a second. Let's come in here and what we need to do. So the big philosophy here is we need to cut apart the geometry, not physically, not in the actual 3D realm, but we need to identify areas where we want to create more than one shell. Right now, this is one shell. Right? This is one giant shell that we move around like we did with the Coke can. But we need it in different pieces, just like we had different pieces here. And it's up to you to decide where you want to make those cuts. So what we're going to do is come over here on the 3D side. You know, we're going to kind of look at it. Now you're you're kind of stuck with the geometry you have. If the geometry is not perfect, then that's as good as you're going to get. So, you know, this, this one's fine for our example, but if I go into edge mode and double click this edge, all right? So that made a selection. When you double click in Maya, um, it'll select an edge loop for you. And there's an edge loop. This could work and it's not terrible place to have a seam but if you look at your own shirt it's probably a little bit low so what i'm going to do this is kind of a little lesson in selecting for you as well because it's not always something that's right on the edge loop so here i want to pick this loop instead so i'm going to double click and you'll notice it stops i just get these two selected because when you hit a fork in the road the edge loop tool selection doesn't know do you want to go this way or do you want to go that way so you have to help it so i'm going to hold shift and double click this edge. And then that continues the selection till it gets to here and then hold shift, double click. And then one more time to finish the loop underneath here, shift, double click. Now you'll see that you have a hand selected loop that goes all the way around. All right. And you can see it matches over here on the UV space as well. So this set of edges represents the UVs, uh, this set of edges. And all you need to do, and you're going to do this a lot, is you're going to go to the cut and sew tool and you're going to do a cut. And if I deselect for a second, you'll see you have a, a pretty heavy white line here and you have a heavy white line here. What that means is you have now cut in UV space, not the geometry. This is still one giant, you know, this is one, still one object. But you see here, we now have a solid line here and it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little bit of a more solid line here. What that means is you have now created two different shells. So here's a shell for the arm. Make this guy small. All right, so I've cut the arm off and separated it from the sweater. Now, what, what's that mean on the texture? It means what you probably like the Coke can again. As I move this shell around the image, as I move this around the image, different parts of the image are being picked up and dropped on top of the uh, the 3D shape. So we're, we have some momentum, so far so good, but there's a lot to fix still. We still have this weird thing going on with these little scoop things, and it's the issue is kind of the same problem. We haven't fixed anything. We've just separated the arm so we can have it separate, but what we need to do is open up, again, think bare skin, we need to find another seam so that we can open up this and lay it flat. That's kind of the goal. We need to flatten out the UV shell so that it's only getting a single layer of information. Right now it's doubled back on itself. It's like a tube and we need this to be laid out flat. So the next step and coming over here, the next step is to decide where we want this tube, 
this sleeve? Where do we want it to have a seam? So again, look at your own shirt and you probably have, like really, look at your shirt, feel underneath and you, there's probably a seam underneath your, underneath your arm. So if we come under here and right click, go to edge mode and you know, it's usually going to be hidden. So you kind of want it not too far in the front or the back. It looks to me like maybe this one is, I'm going to go back to five mode. So it looks, I double clicked and I selected this seam that goes all the way around underneath here. So it needs to be a solid cut that's going to go all the way around. You can't have any little pieces connected, otherwise it won't flatten well. And you'll notice because I did a double click, just Maya sense that the edge loop continues down the side of the shirt. You could, if you want, deselect that, but planning ahead, look at your shirt again. Do you have a seam that's also, you know, if you're wearing like a dress shirt, you may have a seam that's also going down in that direction. So I'm going to leave that for now because we actually need that cut later anyway. So while I'm there, I'm going to leave that. Let's turn this off. And now I want to make a cut there. So I'm going to go to cut, cut, and it's kind of hard to see, but you have a white line now. And that means you have a solid position there. You know what I'm going to do? Bef I'm going to undo that because I want to show you what happens if you don't. Um, right, so now I, I undid the cut, so I backed up just a second. If you select this shell, and again, think bare skin, you need this flat. If you go and you select the shell and then go to modify, unfold. Now, this looks kind of weird, doesn't it? And it's also going to do a crazy thing when it comes to a assigning the texture onto the shirt, right? So you got some weird, even more weird stuff going on. It's technically flat, so it laid out itself flat, but this is because it's like trying to say, lay out a sock flat so that it doesn't double back on itself, right? If, if it doesn't have a cut anywhere, there's nowhere for it to open up and lay flat. So that's why we need to put that seam into that part of the shell. So I'm gonna right click, go back to shell, and it's easier to pick from here again. So I'm going to right click, go to edge mode, and find that seam I want again, and double click. Is that the same one? I mean, it, you just kind of want it hidden if you can. Maybe I'll go one more this way. The geometry is kind of funky here, um, but that's what we have, it's fine. So we'll say this is the seam. You can see it's running along here and down the edge of the shirt. And I'm gonna go to cut and sew. And before I do it, notice that represents from way, like this is the um, this is the inside of the sleeve. As you see, I'm moving my mouse around here. It's selecting, notice how it's, where is it, uh, edges. So see how it's on the inside of the, the sleeve there. And then way out here, this represents the shoulder. And you can see it's also matching the selection down here. As, notice as I hover over one, it's showing you what's the matching edge that it came from over there. So we need to we need to make a cut here. So I'm gonna to go to cut and sew, cut, and it added a cut there and click away so you can see the cut. But now once we've done that, we need to kind of refresh and unfold this. So go to modify, unfold. Now this is looking a lot more like what we had here. Here's a sleeve, right? If you just look at this, you wouldn't say, oh, that's a sleeve, right? You know, you would look at this and you'd say maybe that's the front or back of a shirt, but you wouldn't look at this and say it's a sleeve, but that's because it's been cut and flattened out. And that's what we did here. We've made a cut in the edge. So we've cut it. That represents, let's see, let me show you here. If I go to edge and as I hover, my mouse over the set of edges. Notice how it's matching the edges over on the 3D side. And notice how it matches an edge across from itself over here because that technically is the same edge. In 3D space, this edge over here and this edge over here are the same matching edge as this one over here, right? Again, these are kind of foundational concepts. Hopefully they're you know, some good aha moments for you. But again, just, just think of really tearing a, a shirt apart and seeing what you would get with that. Now, what we can do is, let's analyze this now kind of like the Coke can. So we'll turn the image back on and let's look at the sleeve now. 
if we look at the sleeve, it's looking a lot more uniform. We have an even, if you look at all the checkerboards around here, right? I mean, there's some, when you hit a seam, you're definitely going to have some, you know, that's what a seam does. If you look at the seam of your shirt, you're not going to have the perfect matching of the pattern across the seam. And that's why you kind of hide seam so you don't see, um, you know, things that look weird like this. But if you're looking on the top of the shirt, it's not looking so bad. Let's say you want to align this. Maybe you want the checkerboard to run a lot more even down the arm. So what that means, we know how to do that. You would go to your shell and you'd use the rotate tool and you would rotate the shell until you get the alignment of the UVs. I'm, I'm looking over here while I'm adjusting over here. You know, you, you have control over this. Now, I won't go into a lot more detail than this, but you also have you can change the shape. You're not stuck with this UV layout here. You can go in and change individual UV points. Like for example, I'm just gonna make a mess in the middle. I'm gonna right click and choose UVs. Don't choose vertex. If you choose vertex, that if you're on an edge, that can choose the same vertex on another area. So when you're, when you're over here, even though it gives you the option of vertex, almost always when you're modifying things, you wanna choose UV. So let's say I select all these UVs here. Again, this is just gonna make a mess, but so you can see the difference. What this means is you can change individual UV points. I'm just going to do a rotate. Notice how it's like I'm bunching up the fabric because what I'm doing is for these faces only, because I grabbed those UVs, it's changing the alignment of the image that it's capturing. But the, but the rest of the UVs on the rest of the arm are not being affected. So that's why it's changing there. So what, what that means is you know, say underneath on the seam, if you wanted to adjust the pattern just a little bit, you could go find those particular UVs and move them. Right, so see as I'm moving, I'm making a mess, but notice how as I'm moving those UVs, it's changing what part of the image is getting applied to the geometry. So you, you have control at that level. If you ever need that much detail, you can go in there and make fine adjustments. All right, but we're gonna say for now, um, that this is fine. Now, we're going to keep going on the sweater. But what we've done so far is the foundational knowledge that you need to really do most of your UV layouts. You need to understand how to cut and also, well, you do need to know how to sew in case you mis make a mistake, but we'll get to that eventually as we go through the... Uh, I'll make some mistakes so that you can see how you would sew things back together if you make a cut somewhere and you wish you didn't, uh, how you could fix that. So let's continue with our sweater here. I'm going to go over to the other side. I'm going to hit 5 to turn off that, and I'll turn this off. And let's do the same thing over here. Edge mode, double-click select, shift, double-click, shift, double-click. And on the back, shift, double click. So again, just making a solid edge loop all the way around the sleeve there, doing the same thing. And I know already that I am going to want another cut underneath the arm, so I'm going to hold shift and also double click there. So I've, I'm setting up for multiple cuts at one time. I'm going to cut the sleeve off, and I'm also going to make that cut and down the side of the shirt at the same time. So with all those selected, you can see I'm selected over here. I'm going to go to cut and cut. Now I have cuts there. So I can go to this shell, pull it away just to see a little bit better. I've already cut underneath, so I can go to modify unfold. And I get the same thing as the other side. And if I want, I can you know rotate. I'm just doing this rough alignment at the moment. Move them out of the way here. Move them up to the corners. Now it really depends on what image you're using will depend, do you want it this way or do you want it this way? You know, what your pattern is. And we'll use an actual image like we did with the Coke can in a minute, but let's just make sure our UV layout is taken apart. If, oftentimes you'll work with a checkerboard for a while because if it works with a checkerboard, then it's gonna work with uh, the other parts. So the sleeves are taken care of. Now let's get over here and uh, let's take off this turtleneck. So for the turtleneck, you're gonna have to get way in here and go into edge mode. Double click the farther inner crease there. Double click, that makes an edge loop all the way around. You can see this loop selected. Cut and sew, cut, and that makes yet another shell. 
And for this shell, same thing. It is a tube. It's like the sleeve. You can't unfold this yet. I mean, you can try, right? So if you do unfold, that's not, it's like a weird smashing of a sock again. You're not going to get a very clear, it won't look bad initially. Well, actually it doesn't look good at all, but, um, it's doing some weird, you know, uh, stretching and compressing of different parts of the checkerboard because it's not, this is not how you would cut. If you're making this shirt and you're making this, you would not cut out a piece like this and then try to make this shape. It just, it just doesn't work. So same thing, you need to make a cut here. Now what we're going to do a little bit differently here is previously we were on the 3D shape and maybe I want to hide my seam back here. So I'm going to go into edge mode and double click. Maybe I want to hide my seam back there in the back of the ca the character, which is which is fine, in the back of the sweater. And you'll see it selected the edge here, but it also selected the edge down the back. Now, for me in this sweater, I don't want a seam down the back of my sweater, right? So if I have a nice Christmas sweater, I don't want a big seam showing two different images being pushed together. And you'll see that is represented here. So what we can do is, you can select your edge loop, not necessarily on the 3D shape, but you can also select an edge loop on a shell. So if I come here and double click that same edge, I'm constraining it within this shell and it doesn't go down the back of the character. So once, once you've isolated a shell and you select edge loops, it stays within that particular shell. Whereas if I did it over here, it goes down the whole back and that's not what I want. So double click here to select that edge loop and then I'm gonna to go to cut and cut, select the shell, and then modify, unfold. You see that you'll see there are hotkeys if you like hotkeys. So you know you have control U for unfold there. And then you also under cut and sew, you have a shift X if you like using hotkeys. All right, so now we have cut out the turtleneck and unfolded it. So let's go ahead and rotate it to align it to the checkerboard. Right, so you see as I align that now, that's looking a little better. I'm gonna move it away from the other shell. You, you need to have a little bit of a gap in between here as well for overpaint and things like that, which a little more advanced topic, but uh, try not to, well, don't let your UV shells touch either or overlap. That's again, big party foul. So now only a couple more cuts to go. We wanna go ahead and separate this shape you do have, we, we have made cuts already to the side here. So down here on the side, we have made some cuts. And again, if we hit five to get rid of this, it might show up a little bit easier. So here's our seam on this side, and then we have a seam on the other side. So we do have the front and back separated from the side. So let's see what happens if we select this shell and unfold it, because we do have some cuts. So let's modify unfold. And it kind of makes like a giant overall or bib so what it did is it it unfolded you know it, it did see some seams so it separated and you know you could try and do something like this um you know it's it's doable it's not necessarily terrible but you know the the positive is that you don't have a seam going over and over the top because there's no seam here At the same time if you would it's kind of a weird thing. Again, imagine cutting this out of a piece of fabric and then what you just put your head through here and assemble the rest of the shirt. Again, it's it's doable and it doesn't look terrible, but let's just go with what let's just go with what would be considered more normal. Let's go ahead and make a cut across the shoulder. You'll notice on your shirt, look at your shirt, you'll see a seam somewhere on your shoulder. And that seam is just a cut from let's go into edge mode from here uh, shift click, shift click, shift click. Because again, you don't want to double click because if you double click, it's going to select all the way up the turtleneck. And we just need to make a sliver of a cut from here, 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 and here. Now you'll notice if you come in here, it's selecting the same edges. You could, um, you could also continue selecting from here if you want, or you can spin around the model. I'll do it from here just to show you the difference. Hold shift to continue selecting, shift click. So now I have these four edges and these four edges selected. I can go to cut and cut. Oh, uh, let's talk about something that I've seen people do, which is kind of a big oops. Um, I've seen cases where people will cut 
every single edge accidentally. I'm not really sure how they do that. I think somehow they select all the edges and then they'll do a, uh, um, actually I gotta be careful here. Otherwise I'm going to hose everything, uh, because notice these edges are also these edges. So I'm kind of planning ahead for something here. Um, let me back up a second. I'm going to do something a little bit less destructive. Let's say, and apply it to the case if you selected everything, it's the same idea. Um, let's say I accidentally also selected that, 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 and that when I did my cut, right? So now I have these extra cuts, which just kind of make a weirdness in the shell. Uh, it's a place where you could separate part of it. And if you don't need a cut, you don't want a cut there. So all you need to do is select the same edges and then sew them back together. You see it's not bold anymore. Um, let me go ahead and mention what what happens if you do that. Um, oh, here, let's do this. Let me double click. And I'm going to select all of those edges. And I'm going to sew them. And what that's going to do is it's going to sew this edge to this edge. And also notice how this edge is selected. It's also going to put this back in here. It's going to be messed up. I just want to show you how this works. So I'm going to do sew. And it took the edges that used to be connected here and sewed and moved those over there, but it left these here and then it wrapped the edges back around. So again, it, it um, in that case, I just did undo. In that case, you don't want to do that. But if you do make a mistake doing cuts, like say you cut across there and you did a cut and you don't notice you selected that. And then later you realize, oh no, I made a, I made a shell and now it's separated from that. I need to sew it back together. Hold shift, double click. Again, you would select right click edge. And I can do cut and sew now. If I do just sew, it's going to stretch those edges. So that's actually not what you want to do. Um, but there is a tool where you can move the whole chunk and align it. So I can do move and sew. And that pops the whole edge back to where it was in the beginning. All right. So now back to the idea. Let's go back to before I did that. Okay, so now we're back to the original shirt. We've made the cuts here. What that means is now I have a shell here. And another reason why you may not want them stuck together is you might want them aligned in the same direction so that they're getting the same fabric. You know, again, say it's a Christmas sweater. If you were to have them connected as they were before, one side's gonna be upside down and this way you can align them so they're both in the same direction. All right, so I think we're done with a simple UV layout for the sweater here. I'm gonna turn on the texture and turn the texture on back here. And now if you look at the sweater, what you're looking for is you wanna make sure the grid is the, the checkerboard is the same size, more or less, all the way around. Now, look, you, because of the way the model is, um, you know, you, you may have some stretching here and there. And the way you would fix that is you have to massage your UV points over here. And there's tools for that. Um, let's just touch on that gently for a moment. So if you go into UV mode and grab a bunch of UVs, you can then come to the tools, for example, and do a smudge. And this lets you, um, with a brush, you hold B and drag to increase your brush size. So I'm just kind of, notice that I'm moving the points around, which allows me to modify how they get copied over here. That's that's a little bit more on the advanced side and for really making super fine details, but just know that you do have tools to control how every single UV gets aligned here uh, on the UV layout. That is kind of part of the job as well, but it just gets a little more detailed for uh, when we're just trying to learn the basics. But it does help you know that technically every little UV can be changed in its position to modify how it gets applied to your 3D shape. So now we're going to say our UV layout is done in a generic sense. So we have a decent layout. Me decent meaning the scale of all these checkers getting applied over here is okay. And I don't see any big stretching or there's no red flags anywhere. And again, talking about seams, the reason these don't line up here is because these here, this has a little bow and it goes into black there and this goes into black there. So you get a little overlap, but the, the offset here is because you know, where this one ends is a little different than this one. So again, if you really needed to modify this, you would, if you wanted a perfectly straight line here on the seam, you would need to go in here and select these UV points and line them up vertically. And again, there's tools for doing all that, but we're not going to get into that much detail at the moment. 
what we want to do now is let's go find a particular image. Remember before we we're done with the default. So the checkerboard looks great. So now we want to kick out the checkerboard image. So right click and break your connection. And then now go and add a file input and hop online and find an image that you think would look nice for uh, a Christmas sweater. So I'll give you a second to go find one. And once you found that image, put it in your source images folder in your Maya project. Now, generally, when you're looking for textures online, you want to look for something uh, that's seamless. And I'll talk about why in a minute, because we're going to have to change the scale likely of the texture. Another thing that's important about textures is that they are square because if your image is not square, it's going to be forced into being a square in that UV space, right? So if I go here, this, no matter how wide or tall my image is, it's going to be shoved into this zero to one, zero to one space. So we need a square image ideally, and also ideally that it's a multiple of two, you know, uh, 512, 1024, 2048. Um, so let's just poke around here let's grab um we'll grab uh this one's not square so we're not going to grab that one let's grab this one would be good except they have this little black bar across the bottom that that would end up that is part of the image and that would end up in your image uh let's see what else we got around here maybe I want something that's a little unique to tell what's upside you know if i'm upside down or not and this might be seamless now that what makes it seamless is when you look at the image, let's see, oh, ooh, I like this one. Let's see if this works. Um, I think this actually is fabric. So seam, oh, this image is not seamless and it has all this in it. So seamless would mean when you go from the top to the bottom and side to side that it would repeat the pattern without seeing a jump in the pattern. So that one's not gonna work. Uh, let's see if I can find an actual, you know, there is a site called textures.com what you want to look for is see if you can find something that is, um, I should have planned this ahead a little bit a bit better, but um, how about simple Christmas pattern? Let's see if Adobe can hook us up here. Um, it repeats from here. See how the side of the Christmas tree matches the side of the Christmas tree. And from top to bottom, it looks like this might repeat fine oh and it says seamless but don't always believe that it's seamless don't take their word for it uh, i'm going to see if i can open this in a new tab and just grab the image yep so save that image and put it in your source images folder in your project if you put the image in your source images then when you get to that folder in your project it's going to be right there and assign that to your character there now <laughs> It's a pretty low res texture and besides it being low res, it's also huge, meaning we're making an entire sweater out of this single square of image, which kind of makes it a little weird, right? Like it's got huge Christmas trees. Now it is nice though. Look at the alignment of everything. It, it aligns fine. Everything is vertical. If I, if it was upside down, I could either go into Photoshop and mess with the image or adjust my, uh, oops, I have a weird tool active here still. Um, jump over here and you know if I spin this around you see the image goes upside down so we, we've kind of covered that but notice how this image seems seems too big for my sweater so similar to what we did with the checkerboard before we do have control over that so if I look at my attributes I go into I'm gonna go dig down into my image and then I'm gonna go to this place 2d texture node and I'm gonna increase this is why it's important that you have a seamless texture because we're going to shrink the image, which means the edges would be noticeable if it wasn't seamless. So where it says repeat UV, and let's just do it slowly, just so you see the idea. I'm going to go two by two. What happened is it just repeated itself twice side by side and twice up and down. And my image is starting to look a little bit better. Let's say I, it's kind of a woven thing, so maybe I need it to be double that. So I'll say make it four by four. All right, so now that's looking, it's looking better. That, that looks a little bit more viable as a Christmas sweater. Now, you might think this is a kind of weird place to have a seam, but remember the other one was way down here. So your model really determines where your seams are. Now, if you get into, you know, Substance Painter and you actually paint on your model, you might have a little more flexibility. But again, we're just trying to understand 
what is this UV layout? How did you decide how to put these little patches around? And then what is uh, the importance of the orientation? Actually, this is a good point too. The hearts are up there and the hearts are up there. If you wanted the pattern to go not linear like this, if you want to go all the hearts to go this way, we know what to do. You just select your shell and rotate it. Let's make it go the other way. This is up to your aesthetics completely. And let me move this guy out of the way. And it's off the edge there. Again, you don't usually, even though it quote works, you don't want to go off the edge. So, you know, it's up to you to kind of rearrange this. And if you want the Christmas trees to go right in the middle of the turtleneck, then move that little patch so that and if you want a heart, move it so it's hearts. You know, so again, you have control over where the image gets sourced from where you put your UV islands and your UVs in general. All right, so let's go to object mode, take a look. And I don't know which way I like it better. Oh, the trees are upside down there. You got to make a decision, right? Otherwise, you would put a seam on the top and make the trees go the other way. You know, as it's going to wrap underneath, the trees are going to be upside down somewhere. So it's up to you. If you like that better, then let's go ahead and do the same thing to this one. Select the shell, rotate it. I'm just quick eyeballing there to see what the alignment is. Space bar to go big. You know, maybe maybe I think that's, you know, that's fine. That's good enough. All right, so our UVs are laid out. And we'll say that is amazing. Now, if you wanted to, you could. Remember, there's still the rest of an old man to do here. So if you go back and look at your uh, show all, we have the rest of the old man to do. But we're, let's just focus on the sweater. There's some issues with, uh, you know, how you're gonna do, you know, how you're gonna do that. Where you're gonna put your seams and um, mesh wise, this is probably not what a normal head would look like. This is more like a post sculpting versus an optimized polygon head. But anyway, um, and then same with the shoes. But the idea is the same. You would come in here if you wanted to customize your shoes. Uh, it's going to get a little trickier because uh, you can't necessarily go to edge mode and just double click to uh, take off, you know, the the sole of the shoe. You're going to have to come in here and do that uh, shift click or or, you know, there's some other selection tools. You know, there's, you know, box select and things of that sort. But uh, again, you would take it apart and lay it out. Gently, but let's just keep focused on the sweater. We'll call that an intermediate class if anybody ever wants me to do one on the, how would you do the shoes? But I would do the exact same thing. It's just gonna be a lot more work actually, but the concept's totally the same. So let's, uh, let's just export the sweater as a shape for now and get that over to Unreal. So we're gonna export as an FBX. So file, export, export selection. And it's already set to FBX on mine. I'm gonna put it in my assets folder within the project so that I have it all contained in one place in case I need to migrate it or you could send it to your desktop put it wherever you want and I'm going to give it a name sweater dot fbx and I'm going to keep everything as the defaults and export selection all right save your scene so you can come back here but for now that finishes the Maya aspect and that'll get us set up so that we can see how it looks over in Unreal. So go ahead and pop open Unreal now and let's import our sweater. So I started a new project in Unreal and I just opened up the minimal default level which you'll find in the starter content maps folder right. So minimal default just to get something here rather than a barren landscape. And let's go ahead and bring in our sweater. So I'm going to make a new folder for that. Let's make a new folder, call it sweater. And then I'm going to go into this folder and I'm going to drag and drop my FBX asset into here from its explorer folder. So here's the path. I put it in my assets folder in Maya when I did the export. So here is the sweater and I'm going to drag it into my new folder here and the old import dialog launches. So I'm gonna reset to default just to make sure everything is the default. In this exact case, actually I'm gonna go ahead and not generate missing collisions. I don't really need it. Doesn't do any harm if you do, but whatever, I don't need it. So I'm gonna uncheck that or just leave it at default. It's fine, whatever. And then import. So leave everything at the default and import. 
and in comes your character. Now, smoothing groups was something back on the Maya side I could have done, but it's fine. Ignore that warning and drag your sweater in here. And here it is. So a couple things, well, at least one thing I noticed offhand is when it came over here, uh, you'll notice it seems to be one-sided. So to fix that, if you do need to see through to the other side, select your material and double click and opens up the material and just grab your default material here at it's called it Lambert three go down to where it says two-sided and check two-sided and save and let's see while we're in here what else we got we got the texture coordinates so that came over from Maya the tiling the scaling that we did of four and four that made it across as well as the link to the image and also the actual Lambert here. And after you're done changing to two-sided, go ahead and close that. And then now you see that it's a two-sided material so that you can see on the inside there and also up the sleeve. It, look, it would look weird if you didn't turn that on in certain locations. So it looks like everything came across fine. Let's double check some things that you can troubleshoot when you do get to the Unreal side if you wanna see what's going on. So I'm gonna double click my asset and it's gonna load the static mesh editor. So here's my sweater. To see the UVs, you go to UVs and choose UV channel zero. This looks pretty familiar, right? These are the UVs we laid out over here in Maya. All right, so we got this, you know, that, 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 take a look at that and then take a look at that. It looks the same because it is the same. So these are the UVs we brought over. Uh, you could see they triangulated the quads, but other than that, it's it's more or less the same. You might say, well, what is this UV channel one? What are these UVs? So these are the UVs that Unreal made when you did the import for light baking. Light baking is kind of a longer topic, but the short version is to save um, in processing for real time, you can have the effect of lights baked into a texture, which that gets in, added on top of your actual texture. Um, you know, like uh, shadows or occlusions or such will kind of be a, a separate layer on top of your normal texture so that they don't need to be calculated at runtime. So, and again, that's kind of a different topic, but that's what this other uh, UV set is, UV channel one. Now, you don't have to have this made. There was an option when you import your asset that you can tell it not to make the UVs. Uh, let's see if we can fake that out again. I'm gonna delete these real quick just to show you where that is. So clean up my mess there and let's do that again, bringing in our sweater. And this time, uh, let's look for that. It is generate light map UVs. If you uncheck that and import, next time when you open up the sweater, in the static mesh editor, you'll see there is only UV channel zero. That, that's your UVs that you did. It didn't make the ones for light baking. If you knew you didn't need to bake the maps, then you could do that. Oh, look, I have a foul here on my map. You can see a little bit of a indication here. It's bleeding out the edge. Is that true? Let's go over to Maya. Did I make, oh yeah. Oh, look at Unreal caught me. I have just a little bit peeking out over the edge here, which is actually a bad workflow. So I would want to come in here and nudge this back away from the edge a little bit. Much better now. But that means I have to save, then go over and re-export, re-import and such uh, to fix that. So turbo fast, uh, let's take a look at the pants. Again, just extremely fast version here. I'm just gonna go rapid. So I'll do the same thing. Add a Lambert, add a checkerboard. I'm gonna bump up the scale of the checkerboard. Just go 10 and 10. Hit the six key so you get your checkerboard on here. Uh, now remember, this also doesn't have a default layout. So I know for sure if I do the um, automatic, it's gonna look weird, right? So it tore it apart and it took it in all different pieces. So that's not what I want. And so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to do it uh, just so it puts it all back together. I'm just gonna do a camera base so it's a single shape, but that also is not good just like we saw. So I'll just go really fast here. I'm going to go to edge. I'm going to grab, oh, there's not really a good edge here. Let's, let's grab that edge loop, turn off texture. So there's a loop there. Uh, inside, let's go and grab this edge loop, shift, double click. And this one I think is matching on the outside. 
and then we'll need a seam underneath there. So just trying to take these apart like a pair of pants would. If you check your own pants, you probably have seams in the same places. Then I'm gonna do a cut to all of those in one shot. And then look at all my shells. So I got four different shells here. I selected them all, right? So here's one, two, three, four. Select them all and modify unfold. That flattens them all out. I'd have to resize and move and rotate, but now if I take a look at the texture here, um, I have even scaling and even, you know, definitely need some rotation and massaging of it, but now I've uh, at least have something that I can work with in different patches. And again, based on your geometry is gonna determine what's good and what's bad. And as far as the textures that you apply, let's, uh, one more grand finale, let's just for fun, oh, let's put an actual texture on there. So if I go to my material attributes, break this connection, we'll just use the same, uh, have a nice matching top and bottom. So let's add the same Christmas sweater for this one. All right, so he's got some, you know, Christmas trees lined up there. We have the same issue we saw before, the texture 2D. I would need to increase the, whoops, the repeat on that. I forget, 4 and 4, I think. Oops, not 4 and 40. 4, ooh, four and 4. Okay, now the texture, so this is good we're looking at this. Why does this look so small versus this up here? These shells, these UV shells take up more real estate on the image than over here, which means it kind of looks like it's compressing the image. So you could, if you wanted to, treat this a couple different ways. You could shrink this down. As you shrink this down, it makes the texture look like it's getting bigger. All right? So you do have to kind of control what kind of scaling you want. And if you wanted this, you know, if I'm looking at the, uh, the waistline there and I rotate this, say I want to make the waistline line up, right? so it's looking a little better through here. It's starting to wrap weird when it gets down here, and that just means you got to take all these UVs, right? So let's let's do this really quick, um, in a bad way. But notice if I rotate those, see how that straightens up the Christmas trees there. If I undo that, notice how they went crooked. But as I take just that section and straighten them, they kind of align better. And then you'd have to, you know, again, there's tools that will do this better for you. You know, some of the smudge and move and to, you know, there's just different tools that help you work with your UVs better. There's like relaxing and multiple unfolds and you can reproject if you want. Again, lots of specifics to get into, but as long as you understand the basics of you have control over what you're copying from this image over here, you'll at least know enough to, to get the gist of how this all works. And then you would output this and you'd bring it over to Unreal and then you would have your character in Unreal with all the uh, UV glory. All right, that was a lot of information for you, but I hope that gives you a basis of understanding for how UVs are created, how you can make your own simply, and how you can then see what those look like over in Unreal. Now, technically there is a modeling mode in Unreal that does have a section on UVs, but you know, until this gets further refined and developed, uh, in most cases in the real world, this is as of 5.3, uh, most of your content that you import your assets are going to be from outside the package and somebody is going to have already done the UV layout for you in either Maya or Blender or whatever else. And then, you know, it's good to go ahead and learn these, but generating them from scratch are still going to be done outside the package and you can use this in here to tweak it. Although again, in the real world, you'd probably send it back to your uh, modeler and texture painter and have them work on it before you get it back over here. But at least there are some things you could do in here in an emergency situation if you had to. Hopefully, this gives you a full understanding of what's going on with UVs, what shells are, UV shells. Again, if you're using Blender, everything is the same, except they call it an island in Blender, but the idea is the same. All right, that's it for this one. Enjoy.